Eurasian kestrels. Um, Eurasian kestrel, as the name suggests, um, they live uh, in Europe and Asia. And But if you look on the left, the map, you can see they barely do range into the eastern United States. But the Earth is a globe, and the other end of their range, they also extend into Alaska. The map doesn't show this. Um, and so they have been sighted in Alaska and uh, also in the northeastern United States. So this is a photo of a Eurasian kestrel that was taken in the United States, as was this. And um, so it, it's very rare to see them here. But uh, it's important to understand that they, that they do have small populations and that they might be something you could encounter if you're in the right place in the right time. Eurasian kestrels are much larger than American kestrels. The left bird is a Eurasian kestrel. The one on the right is an American kestrel. Um, but here's something unique between the two of them, not only size, but uh, male and female Eurasian kestrels look the same their first year of life. The females are bigger, but their colorations are identical. And then once uh, they turn one year old, then the males get their blue head and their blue tail. So um, American kestrels are not that way. American kestrels basically have their adult colors uh, from, from their first year. Now the patterns of the malar stripes are very different as well. A Eurasian kestrel has a faint front malar stripe and that's it, while the American kestrel has two to three malar stripes. Okay, now we're going to talk about bat falcons. Bat falcon <laughs> I had to put the Batman logo, I thought that would be funny. Uh, bat falcons are, are really beautiful, fancy looking birds, but they're not very big. They're, they're neotropical, and uh, here's the neotropical dilemma, an interesting thing that, that happens uh, at a certain, uh, certain latitude, it seems. That there's these three closely related falcons that all look very similar. Um, on the left is an orange-breasted falcon, in the middle is a bat falcon, and on the right is an aplomato falcon. All of these occur in North America, and they all look very similar. Um, but they scale, each one is like a scaled down version of the next in size. So Africa has a similar situation at about the same latitude. You have the Tita falcon, the Barbary falcon, and the red nape Shaheen falcon. All of these are, you can see, they look all about the same, but they're just all just a step up from each other in size. So throughout the world it seems Anytime there is a very successful raptor species, and that species encounters a wide range of prey opportunities, it will diversify into a small, medium, and large form. The small form will usually be 120 to 200 grams, the medium form 300 to 400 grams, and the large form 500 to 800 grams. This is not just true with falcons. Uh, we also see this with other, other families, like in the United States, our occipiters or forest hawks. We have the sharpshin hawk the Cooper's Hawk, and the Northern Goshawk. And all three of these, you can see how similar they look, but again, you have a small, medium, and large form. But back to the bat falcons. I just have to throw that in because I think it's really interesting. Not a lot of people know about that. So bat falcons, um, they're, they're basically kestrel size, kestrel to merlin size, sort of right in between. They're as buoyant, if not more so, than kestrels, but they're more mast-based in their momentum than kestrels, but less than merlin. So in other words, their body is denser, and so um, they use that density to, to hit harder when they're chasing and when they're hunting. They typically hunt on the wing, and uh, compared to a kestrel, which will dive down and catch something on the ground. I, I think of them as like a supercharged, caffeinated kestrel. So they're kestrel to merlin size with more umph. So those pictures hopefully give you a bit of an idea of the size. They're not huge, but uh, definitely bigger than a kestrel. But, you know, again, as, as the same size or a bit smaller than a merlin. Here's one in flight. They're just so striking. And they live up to their name. They will hunt bats, and uh, oftentimes they will eat them while they are flying still. They'll catch one, and they'll eat it while they're flying to catch as many as they can before it becomes totally dark. 
They eat a lot of insects as well. Um, and that's not necessarily just because that's what they're built for, but being a, a tropical species, there are more year round uh, insect prey opportunities. And they do hunt a large number of small tropical birds. Now, if you uh, get down into the Yucatan, if you get down into Mexico, Guatemala, and visit some of the Mayan ruins, a lot of times the bat falcon will nest on top of these ruins. And uh, it's, you know, in a, falcons do not build their own nest. And so a lot of these ruins provide great opportunities uh, to have an open place to hunt from and also a, a place with a ledge to lay their eggs and raise their young. So that is the bat falcon, one of my one of my favorite falcon species. That's the end of part two of this PowerPoint. Uh, check out part three to watch the rest of this presentation.